Hello. Today we're going to talk about formatting a chart in Excel. In my previous video I showed you how to make a chart and so that was very much about selecting the right data. In this video I'm going to show you the basics of formatting. Now I can't cover everything or even a big chunk of it but what I'm going to attempt to do today is show you how you get to what you might want to get to. So I'm going to do two charts with some formatting and, and we'll talk about what comes up there. So for the first thing, I want to create a 3D pie chart which shows the daily sales for January. Those numbers, those labels, right? If you're new to making charts, then this probably isn't the best place to start. I'd back up and watch an introductory video on charts. But basically, that's the information I want. Here's my 3D pie chart. It's fine, right? It's the right shape. It's got the right labels. Uh, so formatting. First thing I'm going to do is uh, title the chart January sales. So instead of just this chart title thing, I will just quite simply write January sales. Nothing too technical about working with a title. Now data labels, that's a little different. So most of the formatting on your charts is probably going to be done from this little green thing right here. It's called chart elements. If you click on that, it's a contextual menu. It tells you the most common kinds of formatting that you might want to apply to this chart type. Now in this instance, all I want is data labels, so I just check data labels and it's as easy as that. At this point, I've edited the title and I've added data labels. Pie charts are kind of simple, because they don't really have an X and a Y axis. Um, but let's just talk about this menu a little more, because rather than solve this problem, I want to talk about solving more problems. So. Here's data labels. Notice there's this little more thing over here. If you click on that, it gives you some options. These are related to the positioning of those labels, which may or may not matter. But sometimes you got to do something like, let's say you want percents. And you don't see what you're looking for, so that's going to be under more options, dot, dot, dot. Whenever you see dot, 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 that means a dialog box. That means if you don't see quite what you're looking for, it's going to be in here. So like I could go percentage and then I've made that change. You can do all kinds of things here and you might need to do things like series names and category names. You might need to work in here and you might not. So in the context of this question it wasn't clear what I needed but I was able to accomplish it from here. Now I do want to be clear that when you're working with a chart hopefully what you want is just sitting here. There's not much more to it than that but there are times when you have to use the, the design and format tab up here so design tab so for some major changes like styles in the format tab this um, in conjunction with this current selection area is how you format the more obscure parts of a chart we'll run into one of those in a minute here um, you can get in really in depth on these things like you could go and change the color of every slice you can you can explode this pie chart move stuff all over the place I'm not trying to do that in this video I'm just trying to show you where to look for things uh, if you need to find them so the next thing up, create a 3D clustered column chart showing daily sales for each month. Well, those are days, those are month. That's the daily sales for each month. Notice I did not mix subtotals with grand totals. Let's make this into a 3D clustered column and let's have a look at it. All right, you might have noticed I'm moving these charts around. I move charts. Um, the best way to do it is place your cursor somewhere near an edge, but not on a sizing handle and just move it around. I show you that because sometimes you accidentally click here and you can move parts of the chart which is not what you want to do. The only safe area is the edge. And when I say edge, I, that, that, that's kind of an edge but that's not what you want to do. I'm undoing to get out of those. If you're not sure how I'm going back, I'm doing control Z. It's horrible for a demonstration but when I make mistakes intentionally I kind of have to do that sometimes. But you can just move them around like that if you grab near an edge but not on the sizing handle. All right. So add a title. Well, it kind of has a title, uh, but it needs a relevant title. So there we go. Move the legend to the right of the chart. All right, well, here's your legend. So let's jump into chart elements here and see what I can do. So there's my legend. Well, it's not a matter of toggling on and off, so let's see what more options has. And oh, sure as heck, there you go, right? Like sometimes all you do is check the box. Sometimes you got to go here. In the worst case, you got to go here. But if you're just going here, then just go here. Like I said, most of your formatting, um, this whole chart elements thing, this is an attempt to make your life easier. So use that if you can, and if you can't, or you have to dig into a dialog box, then go ahead and do that. 
add axis labels to the chart. All right, so what the heck? That's not something we've dealt with yet. First thing I'm gonna do is go in here. Do I see anything that's good? Well, I don't know, that looks pretty good. I check it and I get X and Y. You can kind of see what the options look like. There's more options in here in the event that you need to do something like change the text orientation. Like, do you see how much stuff is in here? This is all just for these axis titles. You might need to go in here, you might not. I'm just showing you that they exist. So I'm just gonna go in here and I'll say months. Right, those options are more than what I need. And here these are, uh, uh, I don't know, sales. I don't know what I'm supposed to call that. But see, I just added access titles. So I checked the box for something that wasn't there. You got some options here. You got more options there. That's just kind of how these things work. Uh, and the last one is a good example of something else. So use a gradient fill in the chart area. So I'm like, okay, I go here. Hmm, I don't see chart area, right? So most things you're gonna need can kind of, you can at least get them going from here, but sometimes you don't have what you're looking for. And in that case, I'm gonna go to chart tools, format, and so I'm like, what the heck's the chart area? Well, see this current selection? You can click, you see how that selected the title for me? That selects that area. Do you see how many pieces this chart's made up of? It's kind of crazy if you've never seen it before. Um, there's parts of the chart that you just, like the names aren't intuitive. So if I'm going chart area, I'm gonna go chart area. Okay, so now at this point I've got the chart area selected. Now I wanna fill it with a gradient. Well, you can fill it using shape fill tools like that and that'll give you a sh uh, gradient fill on the chart area. Notice there was no way to do that from here. So at this point, hopefully you kind of get what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you. Most common things can be done from here. Sometimes you gotta dig here. Sometimes you gotta go deeper into more options. And then when you can't find what you're looking for there, uh, what you need to do is probably work up here in the chart tools. So hopefully that uh, gets you started. And then from here, it's just a matter of applying whatever effects you need to apply. So I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.